What's going on guys? So I am all hitched up to the Texas Pride Tilt Deck trailer. This is a gravity tilt trailer. If you watched my videos from a couple of weeks ago, you'll probably see the video where we loaded this thing up with a bunch of Kubota gear. Well, recently one of the additions that I did to the trailer was adding the new Gen Y Spartan hitch up front. That is the torsion hitch that Gen Y offers for a gooseneck trailer. And what it really enables you to do is have kind of a disconnection cushioning between the trailer and the truck. So any type of vibration or harshness from the truck doesn't transfer to the trailer and vice versa. So this specific hitch is very cool in how it accomplishes it. It does it pretty much the same way that torsion suspension on a trailer would work. You basically have four rubber beads that surround a boxed section of steel and as that boxed section twists it applies pressure to those four rubber beads and those in turn provide dampening and a type of rubberized suspension. So we are on our way back out to Ewald Kubota here in Corpus Christi, Texas. They are the local Kubota dealer, plus they carry all sorts of different types of lawn equipment, tractors, skid steers, bucket loaders, just about anything you would need for an agricultural or construction environment as long as you're not needing something massive. Anyways guys, we're gonna head out there. We're gonna load up some equipment on this trailer. We're gonna tow it around and see how effective this Gen Y Spartan gooseneck coupler really is. Now the specific one that I have has a pin weight capacity of 4,500 pounds. And I hope that the tractor that we load on the trailer will be sufficient enough to actually show some movement because if you order one that's too stiff or that has a tongue weight capacity that exceeds what you would ever load on your trailer by a huge margin, then you just run into a scenario of not being able to apply enough pressure on the actual coupler to really allow the thing to work and you're not gonna allow it to do its job as effectively as it could. So with the one I have on here, I think it should still allow some movement. Hopefully it does, but we'll find out. I'll be right back. What's going on guys? So I am back here at Ewald Kubota in Corpus Christi, Texas. I got my good friend Ruben with me. How we doing, buddy? Doing pretty good, sir. How are you? Pretty good, man. It's going to be a fun day today, huh? Oh yeah, it's going to be a blast. Beautiful day. Yeah, we came out here a couple weeks ago, actually more like a month ago now, and we loaded up a bunch of brand new Kubota tractors on the back of the tilt trailer. This time we're going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to try to find something that won't overweight the trailer in terms of the gross vehicle weight rating. We're going to check out what that Gen Y Spartan hitch is all about. Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's find the right tractor and get it all in place. Let's do it. Getting the tilt trailer all set up so we can load up the tractor. Come up here, close that up. Now this won't move. Well, it'll move a little bit, but not much. Okay, so here's what's going on. We need to load a tractor on this trailer that is not going to be too heavy for what I have the trailer derated to, which is 12,000 pounds. Even though this is a 20,000 pound built trailer, and if you get this with the 20,000 pound GVWR sticker, you'll be able to haul anywhere between about 14 to 15,000 pounds worth of cargo. But because I had this trailer derated, and I have a 20,000 pound trailer, but on the sticker, it's rated for 12,000 pounds, I need to be sure to stay under 7,000 pounds in terms of total cargo on this trailer. So that's what we're going to do. That way we can do a good driving test and not have to find an off-highway road to do this on. It looks like the scene from a movie where the uh, main character is trying to get away from the police and the only way they can do it is to jump a trailer that happens to be in a tilted configuration on the side of the highway to clear a large bridge. A lot of stuff going on out here at Ewald. They have this really nice Ram service vehicle that they use. Got a lot of tractors inside that they're working on. Pretty cool setup out here. It's always good when you see them using their own equipment to do a job. They're about to pave this or fill this in. They got all the rebar over here. Check this thing out. I think they call this the Intimidator. Yep, it's right there. This is really cool. This rips stumps out of the ground. Very cool setup. ourselves a tractor that weighs right under 7,000 pounds. It's the Kubota SSV 65. This is a wheeled loader. 
currently has some forks on the front of it. You can use it kind of like a forklift. So here you have it. This is the Kubota SSV 65. Getting the chains in place. So Ruben, this tractor weighs about 6,600 pounds roughly, right? Yeah. Operator weight. This one, this one is the cab unit, so you're just going to see right around 7,000. It's okay. about 68, 6,900. That's really perfect for the setup we got going here. Perfect, perfect. All right, this is a good setup. And this is a smaller frame unit, right? Yes, sir. This is the smallest uh, SSV, which is a wheeled unit. Uh -huh. So this is the smallest pneumatic tire. Now, granted, you can get these also with the uh, wheel tires, the ones that are run flat, basically. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, this is the smallest 65, and this one is with the cab. That's very so cool. This is the deluxe model. Yeah, and this has air conditioning in it too, which sure is does. really nice. That's it's nice and cozy. That's a game changer. What's one of these go for? Uh, you're gonna see probably around forty-five to fifty-five to fifty-five thousand. Just okay. like I said, depending on the applications. Yeah, and this one, of course, with air conditioning, the enclosed right. cab, all that stuff. And we have the forks on the front of this one too, versus a bucket. That's right. Well, let's get it all chained up and hit the road. Let's do it. Okay, so I got Ruben here. He's about to help me start chaining this thing up, but I figured this is a really good opportunity to kind of instruct people through the process of chaining up and securing a load like this on the back of their trailer. So what do we have to do first? So first what you want to do is you want to get this thing weight centered on your trailer specifically to where it's going to ride with a good amount of weight leaning towards your truck and the perfect amount of weight right over your axles. Okay, so I usually tell folks you want it a little bit above and ahead of your axles. That's is that right, what you'd say? That's right, and you, you want to pay attention to your load of your, your actual tractor. On this one, you've got the engine further towards the back. Mm -hmm. So you, most of your weight on the back of this thing is where you're at you know, okay. on, on, a, on any unit that's, that's, that's designed with a rear engine. Are you saying that I loaded this perfectly? That's right. I'm going to tell you. You did a great job. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. So, and of course, you want to use chains and not straps yes. on any type of machinery. I think you have to in some states, That's right? That's right. That's right. Most states, I'm not 100% perfect with DOT law. They change every few years. So, most states will require you to either have multiple binders on each side or a heavy enough chain with single binders on one side. Gotcha. So the reason why you don't want to use straps is because if you run straps through any of these openings, this is heavy enough and there could be enough motion that you're just going to tear your strap off. It and, will tear the strap. Yep. So that is the main reason why. You want to use chains. These specific chains right here, I believe I got these in grade 70 or 80. Yeah, these are grade 80, 70 chains. And I have 80s and 100s as well, just because different applications might require a different load. But but these grade 70 chains should be more than adequate for this relatively light wheel loader. I think we're in good shape. I think we're going to be great. Let's do it. And we have the ratcheting binders as well, which makes yeah. life a little bit easier, a little a bit safer easier. too. And you know what? I really don't care about the paint. That's the thing. Really? <laughs> Everyone tells me the first time you put something that'll scratch it up, I'm going to cringe. And yeah. I'm like, why get a big flat deck trailer if you're not going to use it? Well, you can't use it without scratching it. Personally, I'm the same way. I've got all kinds of trailers myself. But man, it still kind of hurts that one time when you get that first scratch on your face. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, we broke that one in uh, first day I had the trailer. Yeah. 
That's what trailers are for. Yep. If it don't work, I don't need it. Yep. I love these binders too because the binder allows the handle to kind of fold up out of the way. A lot of them, the handle kind of just sticks out and you position it on the inside. That's exactly right. Some of them just stay there and they're what yep. you call teeth breakers. I could be helping you do this, but then who's going to hold the camera? That's right. I like that channel right up front. Is that common on all skid loaders or is that something Kubota does? That's common on most. These are Kubota's design, but that's common on most of your pieces of equipment. Okay, because I see on a lot of these, you pretty much have to use these side anchoring points, but yeah. I think a lot of people may not even know that that channel's up there to uh, to secure it with. Well, the problem with the, with the problem with it is if, if you had something heavy that's on here, uh -huh. that's sitting above the actual trailer itself or something stacked underneath, then you would want to bind these down so that your, your arms don't sit there bouncing during transit. Gotcha. This is just to, uh, to, to specifically anchor down the frame itself. And I've always been told that if you have a bucket or any type of uh, an attachment on the front, you also need to strap that down as you well. You want to chain, exactly. Gotcha. Something like this that has the hydraulic couplers, it's not 100% necessary because the machine is hydraulically mm -hmm. pushing holding down, yep. to that. Keep in mind though, one of the safest things you can do is on your rear, either bind forward and on your front chain, bind backwards, or bind backwards on your rear and bind forward on your front. Gotcha. So there's that always That way you're pressure. always pulling away, both ways. Perfect sense. It's always good to have an excessive number of chains binders and all the equipment you might use. I even have ratchet straps with me as well. I have more binders. I have the standard binders as well. These are actually brand new. My old binders are in this front toolbox out of the way. We're all loaded up and secured. Ready to hit the road? Ready to go, let's go. Let's see what this thing can do. Absolutely. All right guys, so we are on the road. I got my good buddy Ruben next to me. How you doing my friend? Doing pretty good, sir. We have this beautiful Kubota SSV 7, or 65. 65, yes sir. And this is a wheel loader, so this one does not have tracks. This one is weighted up to about 7,000 pounds. One's a little bit less perfect load right now we are right at about 12,000 pounds gross vehicle weight if you consider the weight of the trailer and the weight of the tractor it's going to be really interesting to see how this gen y spartan hitch handles the tongue weight when you factor where we place the tractor i mean everything's pulling real smooth to be 100 percent honest with you the difference for my setup is relatively subtle i don't want to say that this is a mind-blowing difference you can kind of feel where some of the bumps that you might normally hit are a little bit smoother it's handling it a little bit better the motion that it helps eliminate is really the up and down motion with this hitch not necessarily the forward and back if you're going to be hauling a fifth wheel or even gooseneck trailers you're going to have a little bit of what's called chucking and that's essentially the weight transfer from the trailer pushing forward or backward against the truck and this isn't in my opinion designed really to attack that it's more designed to give you cushion whenever you go over bumps and you have that weight compressing against the bed of your truck because that's what these torsion arms do they provide dampening from up and down motion versus forward and back motion but you know it feels smooth it feels real smooth yeah it definitely this doesn't, trailer books this trailer pulls really well it does it's 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 not a jerky feel it doesn't feel as if you're hauling a heavy piece of equipment and you know in all respects what i'm hauling isn't terribly heavy but for a trailer this size being you know pulled by a light duty truck it still feels good now i know again there's people out there that haul you know upwards of 35 40 thousand pounds and they're using a setup like this and they can tell you how their experience is but i think for the average person hauling a gooseneck trailer they're probably going to be more in the 12 to 15 thousand pound range and i think this handles it well you know when you guys sell construction companies lawn care landscape companies tractors 
what typically is the size trailer that they bring to haul it away with? A lot of the guys, a lot of the guys you'll see normally are just a bunch of uh, ranchers, farmers, you know, small time stuff. Um, you'll see a 20 foot, you know, utility trailer sometimes all the way up to a 28 foot, you know, gooseneck or a 30 foot gooseneck. I'd imagine that most people probably pull up with maybe a 14,000 pound GVWR trailer or 12,000 pound. It's either going to be twin 6,000 pound axles yeah. or twin 7,000 pound axles. Overbuilding this trailer simply means that really the running gear, the tires, the wheels, the axles are designed to be able to hold more weight. That's exactly right. So there's really no point in people not overbuilding a trailer if you can do it because all you're doing is increasing the capacity of the stuff that is most likely to break under weight. That's right. You know, you know, and the other the other positive to it that a lot of people don't think about is when you have a trailer derated like that, you can always have it re-rated and be able to do more things with it. You know, if you were to get your yeah. commercial license stuff like that, once you build a trailer at a certain rate lower, you can it's it's going to cost you a lot more money and a lot more time and headache to get it rebuilt and re-rated higher versus going the other direction. Yeah. And oftentimes, because you're essentially having to re-engineer how you have to reconstruct or refortify a lighter duty trailer, you're adding significant mass to that trailer as well. So even if you get your GVWR rated higher, the trailer itself is going to be significantly heavier. It's better just to do it right off the bat. That's right. Go big or go home. Yep. I mean, we are from Texas anyway. So. That's true. That's true. And I am wearing my Kubota hat. <laughs> I love this hat, actually. Well, I'm going to be really interested to see what the movement looks like on that Gen Y hitch whenever we uh, we look at the footage from the two cameras I have mounted, simply because, again, it feels like it is dampening the ride. Now, I don't have any direct comparison against towing this specific tractor without the Gen Y Spartan hitch, but I tow a lot of trailers, and I've towed bumper poles and goosenecks and fifth wheels, and this specific road that I'm driving on now, I actually drive this road quite a bit, and you feel a lot of the transfer. And what I feel is that it's eliminating the small stuff. I don't necessarily know about the big bumps, the real big jarring bumps, which we haven't gone over anything real big yet, but it does feel as if the smoothness of the ride is much more consistent. You don't have that little jostling like you might normally, because typically when I'm hauling a trailer, even at this weight, my voice is kind of fluttering while I talk on the camera where I'm trying to essentially avoid spots in the road that make my voice kind of shaky from going over bumps. And I'm not getting any of that. Yeah. Yeah. It smoothens it out a lot. I mean, you still, like you said, you still feel some of the, some of the, you're not going to not feel the trailer back there. I mean, you got weight back there. Yep. But uh, it does definitely make a huge difference. I think we probably have enough to, uh, to turn around, head back and see how this thing looks on video. Again, it's going to be interesting to see the video because that specific coupler that I have is rated pretty high. That one I believe is rated at either 4,500 or 5,000 pounds worth of tongue weight, which is really designed for a heavier gooseneck trailer or at least a gooseneck trailer that's not derated the way that this one is. Yeah. So once we get back, we uh, get everything disconnected. We'll take a look at the camera footage and we'll see how this thing pulled. Awesome. If you're interested in this Gen Y Spartan hitch, I'll leave a link in the description. Overall, I think it performed pretty well. It did what it was designed to do. Again, I'm not gonna say it's a night and day difference, but it does make those normal smaller bumps that you feel whenever you're towing over the road much more tame. You definitely don't feel them as much. Again, the big stuff, it's hard to change the dynamic of that. I'm sure it adds a significant amount of dampening, but again, it's one of those things that I don't tow so heavy that that's always gonna come into play. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you are interested in this product, I'll leave a link in the description. Otherwise, I hope everyone has a great day. Please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again very soon.